Shibian, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, split of a firearm possession penalty. The government is standing firm on its proposed provision in the 2022 Farms Prohibition Restriction Regulation Act for people found in possession of an illegal farm to be slapped with a minimum 15-year prison sentence. Opposition Senators Donna Scott Martin and Peter Bunting, members of the Joint Select Committee reviewing the Act, on Thursday cautioned against the mandatory minimum sentence, arguing that people can come into simple possession for firearm in a number of circumstances. But Minister of Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort argued that there is no place in the courts for sympathy and reminded the committee that there is a full judicial process before a person is convicted. I am comforted by the fact that matters before the court are dealt with in accordance with rules and the law. While it is human to be sympathetic, sympathy has no proper place in a court of law when decisions are being taken. If there is reasonable doubt, you are quit, even if you feel that someone may be guilty. If you feel sure on the evidence, you convict. And when it comes to sentencing, the rules indicate that you have regard for a number of things, what is prescribed in law, and the antecedents of the accused, she said. Under Section 5 of the Act, it is proposed that a person caught with an illegal firearm shall, on conviction before circuit court, be sentenced to imprisonment for life and receive a sentence of no less than 15 years before being eligible for parole. This is notwithstanding the provisions of the Parole Act, which sets out the time within which an offender is eligible for parole. Scott Motley said there is inherent danger in the provision, and that accused individuals should not be forced to plead their case under other pieces of law, such as the Plea Negotiation and the Criminal Justice Administration Acts. I have to bear in mind the circumstances under which one can be charged with simplicity possession. I'm uncomfortable with it. I can find no research that shows that mandatory sentences actually act as a deterrent, she said. Member of Parliament for Hanover Western, Attorney Tamika Davis, said that while she did not want to be perceived as being opposed to government policy and understood the objective of the legislation, she agreed with Scott Mosley's position, as she has seen firsthand many instances in which a provision such as this one would not apply favorably. She pointed out, that not all the possession cases that come before the gun court follow the same pattern. Not all the matters that come before the gun court, the accused persons are gunmen. There are many, many instances where you have persons who have come upon, or it has come upon them, that they are deemed to be in possession, Davis said. Malahu Fort further contended that possession is the foundation for all firearm offences. She said while it is understood that people can be framed, there is still a question as to the reason. Someone would deliberately take possession of an unlicensed farm if not use the weapon at some point. If you don't have it, you can't use it. And if you come into it in circumstances, turn it over and you'll be treated differently. I have to give the benefit of the doubt to the judges who convict persons, that they were satisfied to the extent that they felt sure of guilt in the same way, notwithstanding any concern that they may have when you hear stories about people being acquitted. I will give the benefit of the doubt to the judge that there was reasonable doubt, she emphasized. National Security Minister and Committee Chairman Dr. Horace Chang said the matter was a delicate one, but reiterated that anyone found with an illegal weapon must face penalties. There is no escape route as far as I'm concerned. Illegal farms are coming into the country in large numbers and are being used to slaughter Jamaicans, he said. Fire safety technician shot at his business place. A 46-year-old Clarendon businessman was shot and injured at his workplace in Clarendon on Thursday. The man, a fire safety technician, has since been admitted to hospital as police search for the gunman responsible. No motive has yet been established for the attack. It is reported that about 7.20 a.m., the man was at the workplace in Green Meadows in Maypen when gunmen traveling in a motor vehicle entered the business. The man was shot several times. The gunman then escaped in the vehicle. Police said the injured man was assisted to hospital where he was admitted. We can't call it a murder as yet. Copsy of the naked man found in house dies. Police in Clarendon have launched an investigation into the death of a man who was found unconscious in his house on Wednesday but died a day later in hospital. The man, identified as 64-year-old Ricardo Brown, was found in a community known as Turner's in four parts by the police. It is reported that about 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, Brown was found naked with a wound and lying in a pool of blood. He was assisted to the Mapen Hospital and admitted in serious condition. Brown, however, died on Thursday. A blue Toyota field of motor car belonging to Brown has gone missing from the premises, the police have reported. 
but Senior Superintendent Glenford Miller, the commanding officer for the Clarendon Division, said the death cannot yet be determined as a murder. For now, we are treating it as an undetermined death, SSP Miller said, adding that a post-mortem and other investigations will have to be done. We don't want to cause something a crime, and it is not a crime, the SSP said. Elderly man dies in St. James' house fire. Police and fire personnel are now probing the circumstances in which an elderly man perished in a fire in Mount Carey, St. James, on Friday morning. The dead man has been identified as 85-year-old Frederick Inerti of a Malwood address in the community. The Jamaica Fire Brigade reported that they received a call regarding a house fire about 3.33 a.m. and responded with one unit from the Freeport Station in Montego Bay. On arrival, they found a one-room structure completely ablaze. During the extinguishing exercise, Inerti's charred remains was found. His untimely death has left the community in mourning. Claudette Orton, a relative of the deceased, said that he was well loved by the community. It was very jovial. Everybody in the community love him. Young all love him. Him give you a lot of joke in your seam, she said. She says no one expected that he would have died this way. To see him die the way it is very heartrending. Sad, very sad, she continued. Inerti, who previously worked as a farmer, lived alone. However, despite his age, residents stated that he still managed quite well. Fire investigators say it's still early to indicate the cause for the blaze. Groundsman murdered in St. Thomas. The police in St. Thomas are probing the shooting death of Ricardo Crossley along Babylon Lane in Seaforth last night. The police report that at about 10.40 p.m., residents heard explosions and raised an alarm. On the arrival of the police, the 31-year-old groundsman, who is from Blacksmith Lane in Seaforth, was found on a road with gunshot wounds to the head. The body was removed from the scene. Police yet to make breakthrough in Tabby Diamond murder. The police say they're yet to make a breakthrough in the March 2022 murder of Mighty Diamond's lead singer, Donald Tabby Diamond Shaw. 36 days have passed since Jamaica, and by extension, the reggae world, was rocked with news that the right time come sing was murdered near his McKinley Crescent, St. Andrew home. Shaw was shot and killed on the night of March 29 in a drive-by attack that claimed the life of another man and caused injuries to three others. The Mighty Diamond song, I when the right time come, Lord, some are going to charge you murder. But at a police monthly press briefing yesterday, Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime, Fitz Bailey, gave a less than flattering update. No one has been charged and the investigation continues, DCP Bailey said sharply when the question was posed. This follows the previous meeting held on April 5 when DCP Bailey said a person of interest has been identified in relation to the killing of the reggae legend. The investigation is advancing. I don't want to comment much further on that, DCP Bailey said then. The musician, 67, who was of the legendary trio Mighty Diamonds, was among a group seated on the roadway when they came under attack about 9.45 p.m. They were rushed to hospital by residents where Shaw and a man identified as Owen Beckford were pronounced dead. Jamaica's music industry has been left heartbroken and angered by Shaw's killing. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson at the April monthly briefing confirmed that the killing of the reggae artist is directly linked to his son, who is in custody for murder. His common-law wife, Ivani Henry, however, said she was surprised that the assertion on the part of the police was held their son in custody since last May. The St. Andrew South Police have been maintaining a presence in the area since the murder. Meanwhile, the police said there has been a 6.2% decline in major crimes since the start of the year. Commissioner Anderson said, in relation to the crime figures, as at April 30, Murders are up by 1.7%, with gang conflicts accounting for 72% of murders, interpersonal conflicts accounting for 14%, while 7% occurred in furtherance of criminal acts. Mob killings account for 1%, and 6% are still being determined. Soldier among three in custody after shootout with police. Three men, including a soldier, were taken into custody yesterday after members of the security forces reportedly repelled an attack by armed thugs in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Two guns and a police ballistic vest were also seized, the police have confirmed. Superintendent Howard Chambers, commanding officer for the St. Catherine North Police, said a team was about to commence cordon and search operations along St. John's Road when they came under gunfire from a group of men. The fire was returned and the men ran in different directions, Chambers said. However, three of them were held, including the soldier and a man who was found suffering from gunshot wounds. The men are to be interviewed by investigators, Chambers said. 
191 new COVID-19 cases in Jamaica, one death reported. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 191 new COVID-19 cases and one death, bringing the infection total to 130,787 and total deaths to 2,973. The new cases comprise 103 females and 88 males with ages ranging from 20 days to 81 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 49, St. Anne 41, St. James 37, St. Catherine 20, Westmoreland 10, Trelawney and Manchester 9 each, Clarendon 6, St. Elizabeth 5, St. Mary 3, St. Thomas and Hanover 1 each. The deceased is a 72-year-old male from St. Catherine, whose death was previously under investigation. There were 106 recoveries in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to 84,150. Currently, 43 people are hospitalized, 11 of whom are moderately ill and two critically ill. Jamaica's positivity rate for the latest round of testing is 18.4%. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.